But she made waves in the UK after delivering a speech at a Conservative Party conference declaring Britain's education system broken because it kept poor children poor. Catherine Burble sings since started her own school in London and is back in New Zealand to tell the story. She's with us in studio this morning. Morena Catherine. Good morning, how are you? Very good, thank you. So tell us how does Britain's education system keep poor children poor? Well, um, you know, it's, it's really important for the teacher to stand at the front of the classroom and have knowledge as their focus. Uh, sometimes modern methods in education uh, can drift towards project-based learning or um, not address the basics of reading, writing and maths and, and, and doing lots of practice in, in small bits so that uh, children can build on that and, and, and having really high expectations of all of our children, including the poorest and most disadvantaged. So New Zealand's education system is about to change uh, and we are having seeing a move towards project-based learning. Mm. Do you think we're in the wrong direction? I think so. I, I, I think that, um, you know, the, the richer children can sometimes uh, survive such things, but uh, poorer children who don't have access to what I call the, 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 the currency of, of culture, um, knowledge of, of theatre and books and, and, and art galleries and that kind of thing, poor children don't get to access that at home and they need to be able to access that at school and that requires the teacher believing that they are the fountain of knowledge at the front of the classroom uh, giving the children what they know they have degrees they have lots of experience and 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 they should be imparting that knowledge to the children so that the children the poorest can really take advantage of that and um, I hope that New Zealand uh, may, maybe backtracks a bit on that and, and goes back to more of the basics of the reading and writing and, and, and maths with the, with the desks in rows and, and the children looking up to their teacher and adoring their teacher while the teacher leads the way. I'm glad you think that we adore our teachers and we look up to them, <laughs> but that's fine. You have um, traditional base learning, of course, but you don't teach IT either. No. Isn't IT important in the modern world? Well, yes, and, and you would be amazed at just how good children are with IT, you know, because they grow up with these things. They often know so much more than the teacher. Right. And when you are teaching children who come from these disadvantaged backgrounds, they, they don't get to access books at home. So you want them doing as much reading as possible, uh, phonics breaking down to the very smallest bit so that you can build that back up. And when they learn their alphabet and their phonics, they then can read forever. And IT, I mean, I'm not against IT. I just feel at school we need to expose them to the things they wouldn't otherwise be exposed to. Right. Uh, our strict teacher's been one of them, and you've been called the strictest <coughs> teacher in Britain. But you also want to give them an enjoyable learning experience. Yeah. How do those two things correlate? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, you know, order and structure, uh, sometimes people fear those things, but actually that's where children feel safe. A school without bullying, a school where children feel happy to put their hands up and answer questions and they know they won't get laughed at, where, where learning is really celebrated, that's, it's a fantastic thing. And then that means you can really stretch them so that Shakespeare isn't something that children are terrified of, but they really enjoy because they're in an environment which allows them to do that. So our children love the fact that it's strict. They, they, they always talk about how they feel safe and looked after by their teachers, um, where the teacher is then empowered and confident to be able to lead the way in, in the learning. So can you tell us about some of these rules that uh, you impart? Um, well, we have silence, for instance, in the corridors. Now, I know some people think silence in corridors. That's why where you, you gossip. Have? Yes, but you see, if you're gossiping too long and you turn up to your lesson 10 minutes late, you've lost 10 minutes of learning. And if you come from a family where you won't access books at home and you don't go to art galleries at the weekend, then teachers need to use every possible minute. We talk about 59 minutes out of every 60 in, for every lesson at Michaela. And because they rush along so quickly, quietly, and it becomes normal. It's not, it's not oppressive at all. I mean, the children just rush along to their lessons and they're thrilled to get in there and start learning again. So uh, I, I just don't see any negatives when it comes to, to having that, that, that kind of high expectations of behavior because it allows really deep learning in the classroom where knowledge is your focus, where memory is the focus. So times tables for instance people think oh that must be boring but our children chant them together and they do all sorts of funny movements and they absolutely love it and when, once you know your times tables inside out when it comes to more complex problem solving you've got those times tables that you can just draw out of long-term memory really quickly to be able to do that complex problem solving amazing thanks for your time this morning Catherine Burble Singh uh, from you. Michaela School in London Thank very you interesting for having me. tell you what you should meet our colleague Daniel
It's only a hunch, but I think yes. you get along very well oh, indeed. Really? Yes, oh. actually, I should ask you. Um, <laughs> there is a school in Southland that are banning beanies inside school grounds. I'm not sure why. Uh, apparently, they want they want the not part of kids the to wear the uniform. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's okay? Well, I suppose it depends. If they're being naughty with the beanies and whacking each other over the head, then I can understand why they might ban it. So I, I, I would be reluctant to, to judge the school without knowing. But, um, but then I suppose, you know, sometimes it gets... In, in, uh, at Michaela, it, they wear blazers every day. But then one week out of, in the year, it gets really hot. And so we say for that week, they're allowed to take the blazers off, for instance. You can make exceptions to the rule sometimes. Amazing. Thanks for your time again, Catherine uh -huh. Bibbleson. We have had